welcome to the Village Kitchen. I'm going to be doing um, a kind of a fun recipe this time that's a really good thing to get the kids involved in. And it's pretty simple and you can kind of put whatever you want into this. This is going to be making wontons. So we're going to make this, this series of recipes is all about honey, so involving honey in this. We've got um, B1 third have hives on the top of West Village that they harvest honey from and that's what I'm going to be using in this recipe today just to make a lovely honey, soy, sesame dipping sauce to go with the wonton. So, but first of all we need to make a filling for the wontons and this can be whatever you like. You can buy these wonton wrappers just from the supermarket, they're easy to come by. Um, so you need that part, then you need some sort of mince and it could be pork mince, beef mince, chicken mince. So I'm using chicken today but things like prawns, whatever you like, you, you can, whatever it is that you like, use that. Um, I've got about 250 grams of chicken mince here and the flavourings I'm going to put into it all really very much Asian, classic Chinese flavours. I've got some shiitake mushrooms, now these are dried shiitakes, they've got a much stronger flavour than a fresh shiitake. You buy them in a packet like this and they're, they're hard and dry and so you need to just soak them in, in hot water for maybe uh, an hour or two and they soften up. The stems tend to not soften up though, so what I do is just cut the stem out for a start and just throw a bit of this in there and this is a strong flavour but it's a beautiful flavour. So once I've taken the stems out of those mushrooms and just, just slice them up and then chop them up as fine as you can, they don't need to be super fine into a, a, a mince kind of the same size as the, as the chicken is perfect. Throw those in there. And then all the other little bits of flavourings in there as well. So a clove of garlic. And then some ginger or in this case this is galangal which is kind of in the ginger family. It's used in a lot of Thai curries and things like that. Peel it just like the same as you would with ginger. And then I'm going to grate some of that in there as well. And then some just finely chopped spring onions. Now, what I'll do is just going to get rid of the outside leaf because it tends to be a little bit sort of damaged from, from traveling. So we'll get rid of that. It can, it tends to be, it can be a bit dry as well. So let's get rid of that for a start. And then into this mix, I'm just going to use kind of the more the the white part, the white end of the shallot. So I'll save the green part and slice that really finely and that can be the, the garnish for this. So chop that up. And then the last flavouring thing in this is going to be some coriander. So some people love coriander, some people hate it. Um, it's really good in this and it's so finely chopped up through this that you don't really even notice that it's there. So even if you don't, you think you don't like coriander, give it a crack. Now the thing with coriander is that the leaves have got good flavour, but the stems have got even more flavour. So don't waste those. They're really soft, so they don't need, you don't need to kind of pick all the leaves off and just and throw the stems away. You always use those as well. And just chop that up nice and fine. Okay, and then there's just a couple more ingredients that go into this. Just a little bit of corn flour. I'll just bind it all together nicely. It doesn't need much. Um, a little splash of soy. And you can remember also, you're going to be dipping these wontons into a dipping sauce with soy in it. So it doesn't need to be really salty. And then a little bit of white pepper as well is good. Just mix it all together. And if you buy chicken mince or whatever, if you, if you have whole chicken breasts, you can just put that into the food processor, into the blender, blend it, that up into a bit of a, a rough paste, and then add all these things to it as well. So, okay, so this is the fun bit. Once the, the filling's made, and this, like I said, it can be whatever you like. You, could, you can do prawn and pork ones if you want to. You can do whatever you've got, got on hand. Um, now, the wonton wrappers, I think it's usually about 30 in a pack, and this should probably, I think this mix will probably make about two dozen. We'll see how we go. 
And it's a good idea just to keep them covered up with something so that they don't dry out while you're rolling. What I like to do is just and not don't overdo it. So this is the bit where you can get the kids involved. So lay them out about six at a time so they don't dry out too much. You can put them on the bench in front of you. Like that. And then don't overfill them either. You want them to be not all pastry, but also you don't want it to all be oozing out the side. So don't get greedy and overdo it. Kind of, a, I guess, a, a heaped teaspoonful is a good amount. So now all the wontons are laid out, the filling's on there. You can either just use water to help them stick together, or I like to use, it's a little bit of insurance, I suppose. Just mix some water with some corn flour, mix that together, and brush that on there. Now I'm gonna show you a few different ways that you can put these together. There's all different shapes and, and ways of actually putting a wonton together. The really the simplest one is to just brush all the edges, This is where you want to get the kids involved because this is the fun part. So you can just grab all the bits together like this and pull them up so that they squish together and squish them into, you would have seen these at a Chinese restaurant, into like a little money bag like that. So that's kind of shape number one. Now when you do this, put them onto a tray with some bacon paper on them. And from here, once you've done this part, if you don't want to cook them straight away, or you've made too many, which is pretty unlikely, then you can freeze them from here. Take them straight out of the freezer, straight into your deep frying oil. So, another shape that you can do, and this is probably my favourite one, is kind of a pyramid shape, I suppose, where you get two corners and you put them together, then you hold it, you pick it up, and you bring those ones in, like that. And then these ones, like that, and so you end up with a kind of a little star shape on top, just like that. Okay, and then two other ones. <laughs> Brush just two sides on an angle like that, and go over the top. Press them down so they're really well sealed like that. And you could just leave it like that if you like. Or just a little dab on the corner, twist them together like that so you end up with that shape. And then one last one. Brush down each side. And then straight across in half. So you end up with a rectangle. Just like that. Once you've done that bit, same again, little dab on a corner and twist them around and join them like that. So you end up with almost like two little corners sticking out. So there's four different ways, different shapes. So if you've got kids and you want to get them involved in playing like this, it's a really fun way to, everyone's got their favourite shape and it's a great way of using your fingers and getting used to playing with food. Okay, so now I've got all my different shapes all made and ready to go. I've got about two cups of oil here. I don't want to heat up litres and litres of deep frying oil and then having to try and work out what to do with it. So the best bet is I've got 24 here, so I'll probably do about six at a time. And just to check, instead of, you know, 180 degrees is the perfect temperature for deep frying, but if you put a little tip in and it sizzles like this, then you know you're in pretty good shape. And just don't overload the oil. You don't want it to cool down. So I wouldn't go any more than about six. So I'm just keeping them moving around in there a little bit, just so they cook evenly. And then I've just got a, paper, a bowl with some paper towel in it, ready to go to drain them off once they're cooked. So now once these wontons are all cooked, uh, ready to go. Just, I'm just going to knock together a really quick 
dipping sauce to go with it, using that B13 honey that's come off the roof here. Um, and it's basically, you need a few different things to, to create a sauce for this. We need saltiness, and that's going to be the soy sauce. And then some sweetness, which is going to come from the honey, obviously. And a little dash of sesame oil, and that's going to give us a little nutty flavour. And then I'm going to put, we want some vinegar in there as well, something acidic like lemon juice or lime juice or some sort of vinegar. And I wanted to put some, um, some pickled ginger into the dipping sauce, so it makes sense to use the vinegar straight out of the pickled ginger rather than wasting that. It's got a lovely ginger flavour to it, so it's just the perfect thing. So mix all those things together. And then I'm just going to take a good pinch of the pickled ginger out and chop it up really finely and put it actually through that sauce. with soy, honey and pickled ginger. 